It's so weird how many times I see bullets in people's backs. I don't know how your back can stop a bullet, but somehow, either way, they got really lucky. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am an interventional radiologist. If you are an OG follower of my Instagram, link up here, you may remember where I used to do a recurring segment called Foreign Body Friday, in which I posted a random x-ray of a random foreign body in any area or orifice throughout the human body. People used to absolutely love this segment and then I had to stop it because I was in training and some people didn't like it. But you know what? Now that I'm out of training, I can kind of bring this segment back and uh, what better way to bring it back than do a whole YouTube video devoted to it. So on this video, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of images and show you different foreign bodies or objects that people have put in different spots throughout their body. I don't think I have to say anything else. Let's get into it. <laughs> So before I show you any images, I wanna quick give a disclaimer here that these are not my patients. I never show any images of patients that I see or images I read on my patients. These are all either sent to me or found on the internet. People used to love to send me these images and I always love getting them. So if you have any images like this, send them to me, DM me, email me, whatever. But these are not my patients, so please don't come after me. There's my disclaimer. Let's get into the images. All right, so I thought I would kind of start my way from the head and kind of work my way down the body to show you different foreign bodies or objects kind of working away from the top all the way down, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and start off with the head and we'll start off with this first one right here. So this image is actually of a patient who got shot with a shotgun. As you can see, all those little tiny beads throughout the image, those are all shotgun pellets. I believe this is a bird shot, someone in the comments below that knows anything about shotguns. I think this is birdshot. Comment down below if it's not. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is. There are a ton of different pellets and this unfortunate person got shot in the head from the side with a shotgun blast and all of these pellets are lodged in the bones and the scalp and they probably will never actually go anywhere because to go in there and try to take out every individual pellet, which is a ton, it would take way too much time and a lot of those may be deep in the brain or deeply lodged into the skull and you just can't get them out. So they may be there forever, who knows? But I will say this patient ever got an MRI, I don't think the image quality would be that good. MRI techs know what I'm talking about. So the next image is this person right here who happened to swallow a metallic hook and it is lodged in the kind of proximal esophagus, if you will, or the upper esophagus. The anterior or air-filled tube in front of where this hook is is actually the airway. So I know it's not in the airway, it's in the esophagus, posterior to the airway. So this patient, must have swallowed this hook. It looks like one of those hooks that you screw into the wall and you like hang art on or like a swing. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't know how this patient got a hold of a hook, but here it is. This patient swallowed a hook. They may either watch this with serial x-rays or they may actually go in with a scope and pull it out. I don't know probably pull it out because it's kind of a hook and it can snag the GI tract while it's going down. You don't want to cause a perforation. So they may go in there with a scope and take this one out. All right, so the third image right here is an object in the back of this patient's neck and that is actually a metallic bullet. Strangely enough, it's crazy because I used to work at a trauma center and so many times people were shot in the back and the bullet would just like hit their spine and just stay in their soft tissues of their back. I mean, for years and they would have it forever. Nobody would go in there and get it. It's so weird how many times I see bullets in people's backs. I don't know how your back can stop a bullet, but somehow this patient has a bullet in the back of their neck. I don't know if it hit their neck first and kind of just stayed in the soft tissues, but either way, they have a bullet for life and they got really lucky, unless they got shot somewhere else that I don't know about. All right, the next picture up here is, I'll see if you guys can guess this first, because it's kind of subtle. You may have to zoom in on the picture, but this is actually an iPhone charger that's stuck in the top of the esophagus and goes all the way down and the actual base of the iPhone charger is in the stomach. So I'll put up the other picture right here. This is the stomach portion of that charger. You can see the actual charging block and it's kind of like wrapped around in the stomach and then it loops up and is stuck in the top of the esophagus. So it's like literally going from here all the way down into the stomach. I don't know why an iPhone charger was swallowed. Maybe they didn't want to lose it. I don't know. I always lose my iPhone chargers, but this is not the way to remember your charger. 
I don't recommend this. Here's another disclaimer. I don't recommend anything you see on this video. All right, the next image, you see how I'm working my way down here. We're, we're getting to the abdomen now. So this patient did not swallow a bird, although it looks like it. This is a collection of silverware, if you can believe it. I don't know if this is all metallic. It looks metallic because it's radiopaque on x-ray, but this is all just a ball of silverware. So they probably just kept swallowing forks, fork, fork, spoon, 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 knife, knife, knife. And they have a whole collection of silverware in their stomach now and that is not going anywhere so this patient is guaranteed to go into surgery they'll have to get all of this surgically removed that's just not going anywhere it's causing an obstruction no food is going to get past that you have to get that out so surgery is in order for this patient next up we have another patient swallowing something i'm not exactly sure what this is it appears to be some beaded necklace or something either way maybe they wanted to steal a necklace maybe they you know wanted to take grandma's pearls i don't know but this looks like a necklace this will probably just go through the system and eventually will come out the other end probably don't have to go in there surgically unless these are magnets and if this is a loop of magnets that is most definitely a surgical emergency because what happens if you swallow magnets more than one magnet one magnet is okay two magnets they can actually kind of get stuck together in between walls of the bowel when that happens that wall of the bowel will obviously lose blood supply and necrose or die and cause a perforation, which is a surgical emergency. So anytime you have more than one magnet that a patient swallows, which we see this not too infrequently. You have to take them to the OR, you have to get those magnets out before they cause damage to the bowel, FYI. All right, so how are we enjoying this so far? Hopefully you are liking this and uh, let's get going. We have a couple more left. So I have like an endless supply of these images. So, you know, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below. We'll do plenty more, I promise. So working our way down south, we have here a cassette tape that is in the pelvis. And the only way that cassette tape got there is if it went in retrograde through the bottom end if you know what i mean so this is probably the most common thing i see as a radiologist in terms of foreign body for some reason foreign bodies in the rectum are like the most common things i see i don't know what it is people love just sticking random objects in the rectum you know to each their own whatever you want to do i don't care but the problem when you start sticking foreign bodies in the rectum that don't have a base is that the rectum actually kind of reverse sucks it in like a vacuum so if you lose grip on it or it's too small, the rectum will just kind of take a hold of it and vacuum it up and you can't get it out. So that's a pretty common thing we see. And I know any emergency room doctor or surgeon can attest to this, pretty common. So this person decided to try to put a cassette tape up their rectum. I don't know if it was like a hot mix tape. They're trying to hold on to it. I don't know, but uh, this has to be an old x-ray, right? It looks older. This is probably before CDs. I don't think you could get a CD up your rectum, but where there's a will, there's a way. This is a cassette. And for the people watching this who are too young, don't know what a cassette is, this is what we used to listen to music on. And before we could even record music or had music on like Spotify, we used to like have a cassette player in the radio. And when a song came on the radio that we liked, we used to have to listen to hours till our favorite song came on. We would have to record it on a cassette tape so we could play that song over and over again. Those are the good old days. So comment below if you remember doing that, but uh, I digress. Let's get back to foreign bodies. All right, so the last two images we have today on this foreign body video, we're gonna have this one right here, which is someone who appears to be wearing sandals and and decided to step on a nail. You can see the nail stuck or lodged in the bottom of the foot. And that is a bad day for this person because that had to hurt so bad. Nonetheless, it doesn't look like it pierced any bone probably pierce some tendons, but they may just pull it out in the ER if the x-ray is okay and all that stuff. But I'll tell you a quick story. When I was a kid, I used to go to the job sites with my mom. My mom used to clean these houses when we were super young. Oftentimes these were new construction homes. And one time I was walking around the construction site, I was probably like eight years old wearing flip-flops and I stepped on a two by four, a board, and it had a nail going up and I stepped on it with my flip-flop. It went through my flip-flop and through my big toe and my second toe and just straight up. Like I put all my weight on it and it just missed my foot and it scared me half to death. It went through my flip-flop, missing my toes. And I was like, holy, I almost ended up like this person right here. That could have been me. And when I saw this x-ray, that was the first thing I thought of is, I remember that almost happening to me. So unfortunately this happened to this patient, but 
Whew. But it doesn't appear like it hit any bones, which is a good thing. And while we're on that topic, I'll just show you one more image here. This is just a single view of the foot. You see the nail overlying the bone, but I don't know if this is in the side of the foot in bone. I don't know what it's doing. And that's the reason why you need more than one view on the x-ray. A little educational point here to tie this all together. So on that note, let me know if you like this kind of video. It's a little different than what I used to do, but I wanted to bring back the whole foreign body thing I used to do on Instagram way back when, like two years ago probably. Leave a comment below, smash the like, subscribe button, follow my Instagram and TikTok if you don't already, and uh, send me some foreign body x-rays, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.